In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. To Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or postule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron, the priest, or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean since, in fact, he is unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With you. And with the Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I will do it. Be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Confronted by a contagious disease with frightful consequences, an entire people protect themselves from illness by social distancing, by isolating the infected, by mandating special clothing, including masks or muffles, and by shaming those who will not cooperate with this approach to public health. I speak, of course, about leprosy, not the coronavirus. 
But after this dreadful year, perhaps we are a bit better equipped to understand the ancient measures which separated lepers from everyone else and to appreciate the extraordinary appeal of a man who could cut through fear and danger, heal the sick, and restore to human fellowship those who had been ostracized. That is why a leper boldly knelt before Jesus and begged him for healing. Jesus was moved with pity, and St. Mark tells us that he stretched out his hand and touched the leper. If Jesus had been a man only, then this touch would have rendered Jesus himself unclean and forced him into the shame and separation of a leper colony. But instead, Christ revealed his divine glory through his mastery over nature, and he healed the man. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Holy Scripture always speaks to us at multiple levels and with several meanings at the same time. And to understand the Bible, we must distinguish between the literal meaning and the spiritual meanings of a text. In addition to the literal sense of Scripture, our theological tradition counts three main spiritual senses or meanings, and they are called the allegorical sense, the moral sense, and the mystical or anagogical sense. First, the allegorical sense allows us to understand the meaning of one event by reference to another. For example, the children of Israel crossed from slavery to freedom by passing through the Red Sea, and Christians do the same through the waters of holy baptism. Second, the moral sense allows us to understand that the words of Scripture teach us how to live in righteousness, a teaching which can shape our lives in truth. For example, St. Paul gives such an instruction today in the second lesson when he writes, Whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. And third, the mystical or anagogical sense from the Greek word for leading. This sense helps us understand how everything in Holy Scripture leads us to the glory of sharing the divine life of the Trinity. For example, the church on earth is the seed and beginning of the heavenly Jerusalem, which is our true homeland and eternal destiny. And so our life in the church now is a preparation for everlasting life. In today's gospel, we find both the literal sense and all three spiritual senses of Scripture at work at the same time. Leprosy was a terrible disease beyond the skill of medical science to cure until very recently. And so Christ's healing of the leper was the literal restoration to health of one particular man who was otherwise doomed to a living death. But in this one action of Christ are also contained three universal spiritual meanings. First, sin is a disease that separates us from God and from authentic human fellowship. And the disease of sin subjects us to dreadful consequences that can easily spread to others as we contaminate them with our selfishness. Second, only Christ can cure us from the sickness of sin and so we must turn to him with faith, hope, and love to be made clean. But this requires of us that we first acknowledge that in our sins we are unclean. No sin is forgiven even by God until it is acknowledged and confessed to be a sin. Third, if we acknowledge our sins and turn to the Lord for mercy, then we are cleansed and restored to fellowship with God, with all others, and with our own true selves. In this way, we are being prepared by God both to join the communion of the saints in glory on the last day and to announce the gospel of salvation now. And that is why the psalmist sings, I acknowledge my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. 
I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exult, all you upright of heart. My friends, let us be mindful of these four meanings of Scripture as we begin this Wednesday our annual journey to Jerusalem, the 40 days of penance and prayer during which we are called to examine our lives in the light of gospel truth, to confess our sins and be forgiven, and to be conformed ever more perfectly by grace through faith to the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn to the Lord with faith and pray for all our needs. For all bishops, priests, and deacons, that with the deep conviction of their own conversion, they will proclaim the gospel in season and out. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. For all the baptized, that they may be instruments of grace for others and witnesses to the truth of the gospel. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. For Christians around the world, who are persecuted for their faith in the Lord Jesus, that they may be sustained by God's grace and the support of Christians everywhere. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. For peace in our hearts and peace among nations, that wars may cease and all may serve the common good. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. And for all the dead, that they may see the face of God and live. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, you desire that none should be lost and all should be saved. Strengthen us in holiness by word and sacrament, that we may lead all we meet to saving faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A warm welcome to everyone on a cold, rainy day. 
Lent begins this Wednesday, and because of the pandemic, we must regulate who can come to Mass by requiring reservations. I'm sending an email tomorrow morning, just as I did at Christmas, to allow you to reserve spots for yourself and your family, but please don't come if you don't have a reservation. We must also modify the way of distributing ashes as described in my bulletin column today. So please read that column carefully to be ready for Wednesday. We are in need of at least two volunteers who regularly attend the 11 o'clock mass to distribute Holy Communion in Gallivan Hall. So if you are here this morning in the church or in the hall and are willing to serve, please send me an email. If I don't get a couple of volunteers, I will have to walk down the center aisle and dragoon someone by laying hands on him. So send me a note. On each Friday of Lent, we will walk the way of the cross at 6 p.m., but we will not be offering supper after the stations this year. And on each Sunday of Lent, we will sing Vespers at 5 p.m. If this year is on your last nerve, the remedy for you is Vespers each Sunday of Lent. A collection plate is available at each door of the church and in Gallivan Hall, and those at home can send support by visiting the website or sending a check to the office as ever, thank you for your generosity. Finally, offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise and glory of His name. For our great and valuable house of the Holy Church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us. And may it become for those who are do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and reveal the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy 
these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving your thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you a thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.